A warm welcome to you on this day, the second Sunday of Advent. We are a people on the way, a people who walk together in a spirit of listening, a people who are a synodal church. As such, today we consider how do we prepare a way for the Lord? I warmly welcome you to our celebration of Holy Eucharist. Our celebrant is Father Mario Dorado. Let's stand for our entrance hymn. Greetings of peace and joy to all of you, brothers and sisters. As we are in the second Sunday of Advent, we are now going to relight the candle of hope, and then we are going to light the candle of peace. Father, as we journey on this season of Advent, we relight the candle of hope, and we light the candle of peace. Grant us the courage to make peace, peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, and peace in our country. A candle is burning, a flame warm and bright, a candle of hope in December's dark night. While angels sing blessings from heaven's starry sky, our hearts we prepare now, for Jesus is nigh. A candle is burning, a candle of peace, a candle to signal that conflict must cease. For Jesus is coming, to show us the way, a message of peace humbly laid in the hay. Welcome to our celebration and let us celebrate in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, to make ourselves worthy to participate in this celebration, let us now call to mind all our sins, and let us ask for God's mercy and for His wonderful forgiveness. And we all pray together, I confess to Almighty, to Almighty God, God, and, and to, to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, 
in, in what, what I have done and in what, what I have failed, failed to do, through, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may your learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Baruch. Jerusalem, take off your robe of mourning and misery. Put on the splendor of glory from God forever, wrapped in the cloak of justice from God. Bear on your head the mitre that displays the glory of the eternal name. For God will show all the earth your splendor. You will be named by God forever, the peace of justice, the glory of God's worship. Up Jerusalem, stand upon the heights, look to the east and see your children gathered from the east and the west at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that they are remembered by God. Led away on foot by the enemies they left you, but God will bring them back to you, borne aloft in glory as on royal thrones. For God has commanded that every lofty mountain be made low and that the age-old depths and gorges be filled to level ground that Israel may advance secure in the glory of God. The forests and every fragrant kind of tree have overshadowed Israel at God's command. For God is leading Israel in joy by the light of his glory with his mercy and justice for company. The Word of the Lord The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing carrying their sheaves. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I pray always with joy in my every prayer for all of you because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God is my witness 
how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value, so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The Word of the Lord. Please stand for the Gospel Acclamation. Sing Alleluia to the Lord. Sing Alleluia to the Lord. Sing Alleluia. Sing Alleluia. Sing Alleluia to the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Sing Alleluia to the Lord. Sing Alleluia to the Lord. Sing Alleluia. Sing Alleluia. Sing Alleluia to the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Itorea and Trancoditis, and Licinius, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord give you peace, sisters and brothers. A voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. That was the voice of St. John the Baptist inviting people to prepare themselves to welcome the Lord. In this second Sunday of Advent, my dear sisters and brothers, how far have we prepared ourselves to welcome the Lord Jesus? I know He is coming, and almost every year we are waiting. But today, I just would like to say that we have that kind of saying yes as we wait for the Lord, but let us also be patient. And I know a lot of you now, you might be thinking, Father, we are already in red light according to the traffic light system of our country. But how come that we are still in a Zoom or live streaming mass? Well, I would say be patient. <laughs> and gradually we will go there. But in the second Sunday of Advent, let us focus our mind, our thoughts, and our hearts to the message of Jane, John, John the Baptist. Repent, for the Lord Jesus is coming. When that word repentance 
was mentioned in the gospel, I just concentrate my uh, heart and my mind to that word repentance. Oftentimes, it's easy to say, I will go to confession. I will ask forgiveness from people. For those people that I've hurt, I will apologize and I will ask forgiveness from them. And if somebody has done something wrong to me, I will forgive them. Repentance in this uh, gospel, in the Greek word is metanoia. Metanoia means change of heart. That's why it is not just saying, I'm sorry. It is not just saying, I, am, I forgive you, or please forgive me. But it is a change of attitude, a change of heart, inner attitude, inner cleansing. And I think that is how the Lord will come into our lives. If we will really turn our back, uh, we will not turn our back against him, but uh, um, face him face to face. If we are turning our back against the light, we are going to see only our shadow. But we, if we are going to turn and face the light, there will be no shadow at all, but pure light. Jesus is pure light. He is the Lord of light who will enlighten us in so many things. And that is why we are waiting for him. So it's really turning around in order to see the Lord Jesus. And today, that is also the invitation of St. John the Baptist. Let's have a change of heart. Let's have a change of attitude. Let's face the light. And in that light, who is Jesus, who is coming into our lives, I do pray that we will be able to see the realities in life. I know that uh, last Friday, we went down to red light. And a lot of confusion. Even I myself, I am confused. Because we will be only allowing people who are vaccinated inside the church. Because it calls about physical health. And when it comes to physical health, we have to follow the government. When it comes to spiritual health, for sure. I will go to the bishop, will go to my brother priest, and you will go to the priest. The Lord will take care of that. But one thing that, is the, that we have to understand now, what is happening in our country, and almost everywhere, for those of you in, your, in, your, uh, in front of your screen, whether you are in Australia or in the Philippines or in America, wherever you are, you have your own protocols and rules that have to be followed. But the good thing is, let us not be confused. Let us always think what is good, following God and what is good or common good of the people. I do believe that really as the Lord comes, he will enlighten us in so many things. Let's have our, a change of attitude, a change of perspective, but at the same time, let us also pray together. Let us pray together to the Lord that he is the light coming into our lives. May he enlighten our minds enlighten our hearts so that we could do what is best. And with God, I do believe that everything is possible. So just like St. John the Baptist today, let each one of us be the voice of God, be the voice of the church to help people, to inspire people, to encourage people. And there and then, at the end of the day, we could say, Lord, thank you for making me an instrument of your um, message, the message of peace, the message of hope. God bless us all. Let's have our proclamation of faith as we all say together the Apostles' Creed.
I believe in God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God the Father has invited us to be his ministers to spread the good news of salvation. We pray now for the grace to recognize the dignity of our mission and the necessary strength to carry it out. For the Church, that all the baptized strive for partnership in the Gospel, walking together in a spirit of listening as the people of God. We pray to the Lord. For national and international leaders, that as response to the pandemic focuses on vaccination, leaders will strive to maintain a sense of unity among their people, encouraging care, tolerance and acceptance of difference. We pray to the Lord. For refugees, that nations around the globe will open their doors to those who have no place to call home, and that the causes of human displacement be studied, understood, and addressed. We pray to the Lord. For families, that the approaching Christmas season will not induce financial hardship and that families will be able to use the summer break to grow deeper in understanding, love and friendship of one another. We pray to the Lord. For ourselves, that we prepare the way of the Lord, that our love may increase more and more in knowledge and in every kind of perception, and that we learn to discern what is of value. We pray to the Lord. Lord, during Advent, we ask that you grant us the time and energy, the foresight and the wisdom to review how we each live our life with our family, our friends, our community, our work, and most importantly, with our God. We pray to the Lord. We bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, guide our faltering steps as we walk on your path. Help us in our struggle. Encourage us in our doubts. Comfort us in our pain. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. now, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. For it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at for at his first coming, he assumed the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the plan you formed long ago, and, as, and he opened for us the way to salvation, so that when he comes again in glory and all is at last revealed, we who watch for that day may inherit the promise in which we hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. So make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Patrick, and Michael, our bishops, all the clergy, religious, and all your faithful. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Dominic, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now, with the Savior's command and formed by divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are all yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Sisters and brothers, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are the called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy they should, should enter, enter under, under my, my roof, roof but, but only, only say, say the, the word, word and, my and my soul shall, shall be healed. healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as you have heard from the news or read in the newspaper about the new variant, Omicron, so let us again pray together our prayer for this time of pandemic and a prayer for healing. Lord Jesus Christ, 
you travel through towns and villages curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid during this time of pandemic that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength. May those who have died from the virus rest in peace and, through your mercy, rise in glory. Be with the loved ones of those who are sick or have died as they worry and grieve. Protect them from illness and despair. Be with the doctors, nurses, researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they know your protection and peace. Be with the leaders of all nations. Give them the foresight to act with prudence and charity for the well-being of the people they are called to serve. Stay with us, Lord, and grant us your peace. Amen. Lord, you invite all who are burdened to come to you. Allow your healing hand to heal me. Touch my soul with your compassion for others. Touch my heart with your courage and infinite love for all. Touch my mind with your wisdom. And may my mouth always proclaim your praise. Teach me to reach out to you in all my needs and help me to lead others to you by my example. Most loving heart of Jesus, bring me health in body and spirit that I may serve you with all my strength. Touch gently this life which you have created now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I know last Sunday... Uh, we have the giving of communion. So for those of you who will be listening or participating in this um, uh, uh, Zoom Mass or live streaming Mass, I will still do the same on th this, this Sunday, uh, tomorrow, because I know you are watching this now at Saturday. So tomorrow from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock, I will just be distributing communion outside the church. I know last Friday... We have already I started uh, the red traffic lights. But as I said, gradually we are going to start saying Masses in our uh, church. That's why officially our Mass, daily Masses will start uh, tomorrow, Monday, on Monday, December 6th, so that we could also uh, have the celebration of the Immaculate Conception. As you could see, we have here the image of the Immaculate Conception. And then, uh, regarding some announcement, we will tell you little by little of what we are going to do according to what uh, the Paris Council and then the Liturgy Committee uh, has discussed. And I will uh, tell them to you through our website and by emailing to all the people that we know in the parish. So, just be patient. As what um, the voice crying from the wilderness, prepare for the way of the Lord, do not be in a hurry. And we will go there. The good thing is, let us continue to pray for one another. And my little takeaway is simple. Always remember that between today and between the problems of today, and the uncertainties of tomorrow, there is, a beautiful, there is a beautiful today. And today, well lived, would make every yesterday a dream of happiness and every tomorrow a vision of hope. So whatever you are experiencing now, and let us have that kind of a positive attitude, always thank the Lord, always praise Him, and whatever grace is, we receive and whatever we have experienced today, live it, 
love it, and share it. Thank you for participating again in our uh, Zoom Mass. And let us see what we are going to do for next Sunday. Continue to pray for one another. And may God bless us all. In line with the, celeb- with the celebration of the Immaculate Conception this coming Wednesday, I just would like to give you a special blessing with the help of our Mother Mary. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, will in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her, through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you, who have devoutly gathered on this day, carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and proclaim the goodness of the Lord. Thanks be to God.